Hey guys, VBad here with another V Plays, and in this episode of the Beginner's Guide series, we're actually going to talk about how to set up voice communications. Voice communications are going to be really important for you to be able to link up with other people and have that instantaneous response on what's happening and allow somebody to be able to react to your situation. Voice communication has been around for quite a while for video games, and TeamSpeak is one of the most tried and true that's out there. Usually it requires a much lower bandwidth requirement, which is why it was very popular early on in online gaming. But Discord is also another challenger to that title. Discord is also a very popular setup, and it not only has the ability to do voice communications, but it also has the ability to do text communication as well as video chat and screen share. Screen share is important because that means that I could broadcast what I'm doing on my computer screen and show somebody else. So if you're one of those people that has a really tough time visualizing what somebody's trying to tell you when they're saying, oh, click in the top left corner or you want to click on this tab without actually seeing it, this is a great tool for that. And I use it to kind of explain things to my father sometimes, even if it has nothing to do with video games, because I can share my whole screen. So let's talk about how to kind of set up those screens and how they how they actually operate. So let's start out with TeamSpeak. TeamSpeak, one of the most challenging things is going to be hopping over here to the tools button and actually putting in the correct input device. So that way you're going to click on options and here is where all your menus are. They're visually, they visually explain what you need to do. So you've got capture right here. Capture is going to show what's actually going to be pulling in the information. Currently we have our Yeti microphone here, but there are multiple other inputs you could use. So if I was using just my headset, I could use my headset. You can also set up voice activation or just push to talk, which is a very simple way to do things. You just set up a key by clicking on this. And now whenever you push the key that you've assigned, it will then broadcast. That is an option as well. Voice activation detection is a nice feature as well. So that way people don't actually hear me until my voice hits a th certain threshold. So for an example, if I hit begin test, test you, you can, can see that I don't start broadcasting until I go past this line. Now, you can change this depending on what the background noises are. So if you got a fan that's kind of loud in the background, you can set it with the thresholds a little bit higher. Now I'm gonna turn off the test because that echo is messing with my head real bad and I'm having trouble speaking, but you get the basic concept and then you, you're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And now you're all set up with your voice input, your playback, you can set to be default, which ends up being whatever is the priority on my computer, or I can set it up for my headphones in particular if I so chose. And you can also mess with the volume settings as well. If you want to be able to actually connect with another group, I like going into bookmarks and managing your bookmarks, and you can go ahead and add a new one. And in here, you can give it a name, like you can say, this will be my clan chat or world of war planes so bam and this will be my nickname that's provided in the chat service so i could be uh v man if i want or i could be well you know v bat would make the most sense right so let's say v bat and then they will give you the default channel information as well as the channel password for you to put in here once you hit apply all you have to do is click on spelling correctly is hard, you can just double click on this and you'll hop into that TeamSpeak server, which allows you to be able to talk to everybody in that room. And just a quick snapshot, hopefully nobody's in here. Connected. Now we can actually click through and you can select different rooms, Oop, select different rooms to hop into and you can see my lights turning blue for when I'm speaking and then turns off. And that's the basic concept. And you can switch around through different rooms. Some may be password Channel controlled, switch. but it allows Channel you to be able switch. to talk to anybody that's in that tab. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect here. Otherwise it'll be really embarrassing when someone tries to talk to me. And I'm going to discard that bookmark and let's go ahead and hop over to Discord. Now Discord is a little bit different. Discord, you when you want to chat with somebody, you can either create your own room by clicking on one of these add buttons, they call it a server. 
So like this, you can see there's my server. This is my room. There's a chat room that's in the main section, but I can drop myself into one of these voice rooms. See, it's changing green to indicate that I'm talking. And I can invite people to my channel. Or if I want to, I can do a direct call. Like I can go ahead and call Avalation and he can actually answer like it's a phone call. There's also options up here at the top. See, I clicked on Avalation, I clicked on Slay. These are different people and you can go ahead and actually start the voice call from here, do a video chat, or just send a direct message to the individual. The important thing to know is when you want to actually send somebody a friend invite, there's going to be a hash code number next to the name. So it's not just my name, it's also going to be, whoop, unintentional. There's going to be a, um, where is it? There's a hash code that comes after my name that's going to be a four digit. So it'll be VBAT, hash mark, four digit code. And that's how you have to send somebody an invite. You can't just use their username. You have to use that four digit code as well. And that allows you to be able to link up with somebody. For setting up voice communications, you're going to hit that gear and it'll bring you to voice and video. And this is going to be a much simpler version of what we saw with TeamSpeak. We've got the microphone input, we've got the headset output, and we also have the transmit when you hit past a certain threshold, similar to what we experienced in TeamSpeak, which is good because you can hear whispering. That it just goes a little bit below the mark. But my son's talking in the background and you guys really can't hear him too much because every time I stop talking, it drops below the threshold. So there's a basic explanation of that. Now let's hop on to World of Warplanes real quick. And in World of Warplanes, it was, Wizards of Waverly Place, of course. But if you want to actually join a clan, one of the ways you're going to do that is you're going to hop down to games and you're going to go to clans. And from here, it creates a list and you can find a clan. Now it's going to ask me to log in, but it's pretty straightforward. It's going to be a list of clans that are available to you. And what you do is when you get to that screen or the clan, you can actually apply to it. I'm not gonna log in because of privacy reasons, but the basic idea works in the sense that you will send in a request, like a request to join a clan, and they will either accept or decline. Typically, you want to seek out a clan that's kind of meant to bring in new players. Uh, from what I've experienced, uh, the clan I'm in, Ace, is really good with new players. I believe FK is pretty good with new players as well as Order of the White Silk Scarfs, OWSS. Those are just a couple of them that are out there that seem to be relatively friendly groups of players out there. They have some of their own sub rules of behavioral codes and stuff like that, but it's all just meant to make a better community. If you're highly competitive, there are clans out there like HFAR as well that are really kind of the high echelon players that really like to push their skills to the limit. But for those of you that are just learning out, learning the game and trying to figure it out and watching my beginner's guide, most likely you're going to want to kind of vector towards one of those other clans with an established player base and a group of people who are willing to take people under their wing and train them how to play the game. So now with that said, let's talk about actually setting up a flight and what a clan really does. Because when you look at your battle interface, it's going to give you an extra tab when you're in a clan, which is going to appear right down here. So Rebel Aces is right down here, and now this gives me a list of everybody in my clan. There's a running chat log, and if you need to, you can just right-click on somebody's name and invite them to flight if they're online. Once you do that, all they have to do is accept, and as long as you both ready your aircraft, you will jump into battle. And that's as, that's as simple as it gets. It's a very simple setup. It allows you to be able to get into those fights together. Highly recommend matching tiers with your buddy. Otherwise, you're going to end up pushing somebody into a tougher fight than they're willing to get into initially. But working together, playing with a teammate, really changes the parameters of the game. And I'm going to show you an example of that gameplay right now. All right, guys. So right now we have viper just sent us an invite because he knew that we wanted to flight up because i was able to talk to him in team speak again a huge advantage to be able to talk to people over voice you want to say hi viper hello everybody so viper is one of the executive officers for ace uh and again like i said very new player friendly group uh there's a bunch of different clans out there that offer the same services this just happens to be one of them so i figured i'd showcase that uh, you want to fly 10s? 
You can fly oh, whatever. Whatever you want. You just name it, I'll match it. Uh, let's go with sevens are tried and true. No, oh, of course you are. <laughs> I'll fly Hammer the B-51. Alright. So, the nice thing about this setup is, while well, he's kind of a medium altitude turn fighter, almost high altitude, wouldn't you say? It, it does have the ability to get up there if needed, yes. And I'm in a P-51, which is going to be the altitude fighter. Uh, this video we last video we were flying around a boomerang to kind of showcase that mid-altitude turn fighter capability but we ended up getting taken out by a 109 so this video i've already flown the 109 kind of jumped in and showed the differences between a turn fighter and an altitude fighter and this is uh, going to be a nice marrying of those two i think also, I wanted to let people know that flying with somebody adds another layer of depth to the game that makes it just that much more enjoyable because it's not a journey on your own and you can rely on other people to try and kind of increase your combat effectiveness and have people help out a newer player. And I can attest to that as being one of those newer players. Yeah. And you guys tend to host a lot of newer players yourselves and help people get, learn the ropes. Yes, uh, it does make a huge difference. And uh, I'm not going to get in depth in my story here, but uh, I went from having a 38% win rate to almost a 60% win rate. So the lessons learned here and the tutelage is excellent. <clears throat> So one of the things we like to do right from the get-go is uh, hit that tab button like I showed you before and take a look at the battle space. We are going to be fighter aircraft, so the best bet for us is to go straight over to the airfield. So I'll take high and he'll take medium and we'll try and work together. We do see that we have an XF-5U on our team. The enemy has a player and a ground attack aircraft as well as a Tempest. And also another ground attacker, the 265. They're most likely going to be going after the garrisons if they know what they're doing. But we're going to go and grab our airfield because that gives a forward respawn point as well as a heal location. So I'll take the high road. I'll take the low. Sounds good, man. Yeah, that plane's nasty. You got, what, 30s and 20s on that thing, so... Lots of crit potential. We we don't call out the hammer for nothing. <laughs> now this is going to be the counter to that with 650 cal machine guns. I like to call it the tickle machine. Because it just slowly tickles away all the hit points. We don't want to get into a head-on. Oh yeah. Don't want to get into a head-on with that heavy. But I should be able to give chase because I'm a light fighter and an altitude fighter. Not the only one engaging this guy. Here's that fire. Burn, baby, burn. Oop, I hit the edge of the map. Cool, picked it up. Good job, man. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Head for the mid. Sounds good. All right. Looks like our team's already working on it. Sounds good to me. Trying to see where their ground attackers are, but they haven't popped up on radar yet. <clears throat> That's the one nice thing about this plane is it makes quick work of them. <clears throat> to the right. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, I see a, a 2 2 over here. I'm gonna engage. Let's see how this goes. You're gonna be. A, yeah, you're alright over there. That's just a multi roll. I found uh, GA. Get him, buddy. He's on the way. He's on the way to our airfield. Got him. Need a lot of tail gunner. Got him. Got him. All right. You need me, or are you still good? Oh no, he felt the pain. All right, you do have a key ninety four two over there, but. 
I, I ain't too worried about you. I just wanted to let you know. Ooh, holy smokes. Oh, smoke too soon. Did not expect that. Well, he's got the hammer guns as well, but... Those Japanese fighters, they got some capabilities, but at the same time, they're paper. You catch yes, them out. Sir. Yeah, what's strange is it didn't even look like he was really pointing at me because I was veering away and he somehow caught me, so I'm not sure what that was about. Yeah, you know how those 30s are. They're magical sometimes. He probably hit you like an hour ago and it just registered now. <laughs> yeah. Is that you? It's hard for some payback here. <laughs> Good job, man. Got him. Alright. Do you see one of the ground attackers down there, but... He's got a lot of work to do. Heading back your way. Alright, there's a meteor way up high. I'm pretty close. Him. I'll go get He's, oh, uh, get harassing him. our bombers. He's gonna get him, but I think I might be able to get, uh, a little bit of... Oh, no. I killed him before he got our bomber. Nice. Right, I'm going to go back to our airfield and see that I have oh. invaded it. I'll go with you, man. And I love these Mustangs. They look so good. Oh, they do. I just got the H. Uh, they're an A, by the way. The H is and, awesome. Uh, it might as well be a jet. It's so fat. Yeah, it is. Oh, guess you just respawned here. That friggin' meteor. That was quick. Yeah. Oh, I see a fog wolf is coming up after you. I mean, was the operative <laughs> word. Oh, jams here. Oh no. Oh, I got a heavy defense aircraft. Put myself right into his crosshairs there. We are actually hurting, buddy. Yeah, I don't know what happened there because we had four caps just a second ago. Woo! Damn, Tempest, guys that's there. the player. I see it. And the meteor's yeah, back and mad. I, I don't think I can outturn the typhoon. Oh, he got me. You out too? I'm gonna respawn yeah. at the airfield. Work our way towards the mid. We were kind of fighting that yeah. battle alone. I think a bunch of our, uh,. Defense aircraft died. Got about 10 seconds. We got a good points lead so uh, far. I found shoddy. Uh, GA. Is it squall line yet? Or is it just getting close? Yeah, 28 30 seconds. seconds. Yeah. Yep. He's done. Uh, somebody killed him for squall line, darn it. It's alright. Heading for the mid. Plenty of opportunity. There's the uh, human right there. I got him. I got him. There's a 58 over here. I'm diving on the 58. We you any His tail gunner is going to be a pain now. And this 58. All right, Buckeyes in the middle. I'm gonna get him in a minute. The 58 just shredded me up. Oh my God, he just rocketed me. Ooh, 
I did not think he had rockets at this point. Goes to show you, huh? Oh no. Jam's on me. I don't have an engine. Engine's back up. Keep it up. Victory is almost ours. That was an ill-conceived attack on that XP-58. Think? Yeah. This crushed me. Your buddy in the meteor is there, huh? So is this key. Figure I can got burn him. him. Yeah, got him. Got us back the uh, cap advantage, but nice. Meteor is gonna ramp. Oh, tried to roll out of it, but I got indecisive. The good news, they only have a GA human. We got E still in here. I took out Buckeye, so. Yeah, I see the uh, Key 94 twos over here. Just lost his engine. Got him. Guess I'll head back to our airfield. We are about to lose it, though. See shoddy killers over there. I figured that's who it was. Oh, he just flipped yeah. it. They only have two two players left, bro. Oh shoot! Him. Baka wolf in a head on. He just took my tail. Oh no. It's the Faka wolf and that bomber. That's all that's left. Faka wolf's down. Nice. There's that bomber. I'm just going to keep hitting that F4. I just picked up Kazuda. Nice. We got this. And he just got knocked out, I think, didn't he? No, he's there. Just didn't render anymore. Threw up the GG. Oh, we got the uh, unstoppable. We did. Good job, man. That was a solid battle. It was a close one, too. I didn't yeah, even realize we we're out tiered till I saw the 58, by the way. Uh, what were you saying? Oh, I was just saying I saw that early that we were out tiered, but I figured, you know, specialized K84, it's like a tier 8 anyways. Yeah, I'm still trying to specialize this because it'll open up two slots for uh, lightweight wing frame and lightweight... Uh, engine so that way i can uh get the maneuverability kitted out so i can take on 109s but yeah man good battle let's see that was fun yeah see all those critical damages you just did man 12 crits gotta love those big guns dude all right yeah, thanks that's fun. thanks for flighting up man I'll, I'll probably keep playing with you i just wanted to wrap up the video i uh, show people that there is more to the game than just playing by yourself flying with other people really makes things a lot better and you can learn from one another uh and if you're a newer player and maybe you're flying in an aircraft that isn't fully upgraded and you're having a tough time you can always pop on with a buddy and they can check your six and keep people off your tail so that way you can work together to be able to get those victories you need to get your times two experiences knocked out and get that aircraft upgraded so it's a lot more enjoyable Anyways, I hope this episode helped you guys out as you're trying to learn how to play the game at these early stages. And as always, I'll check you on the next one. I'm